Hey guys, it's John from FPG again, and uh, what we want to do in this video is just kind of talk about why FPG and what makes us different from everybody else. So you guys are going to see my stock standard briefing. Uh, for those of you who've seen it before, I apologize because all the jokes are going to be in the same place, so just deal with it for me, all right? Uh, Bo, that was for you, by the way. So let's start right here. What's the first thing that breaks on every last bag you've got, military or civilian? It's the wheels, right? Well, actually, let's get technical. It's the wheel housing that breaks. Pop metal axle, piece of plastic housing, and then poof, you know, you're dragging it and you're cussing it wherever you are. Well, what FPG did was make a stainless steel wheel housing. This thing's bomber, and uh, let me tell you a little bit about this. Uh, when Natick tested the Marine Corps bag, they put 100 pounds in this bag and started dropping it from about three and a half feet up to about 16 and a half feet. A bunch of drops, three different angles to see if they could break the wheels and the wheel housings. Guess what? No breakage. The Marine Corps signed off on it and we had the contract for the Marine Corps bag. Okay, next feature of our bags is the Hypalon. And, and Hypalon basically is the same thing that you'll find on the bottom of a Zodiac. Why is it there? So when you're doing 30 knots across River Rock, you're not shredding a $150,000 boat. Well, why do we put it on our bags? So when you're dragging this across the gravel at Bagram, you're not shredding your bag up. Uh, that sucks. So we put Hypalon on all the drag surfaces. You'll find it here, here. You'll even find it up on the little tips there. So when you're dragging your bag and you set it upright, it doesn't shred your bag. Next thing you'll notice is that we got rid of the tubular aluminum frame. Tubular aluminum frames are great, except for when you stress them with weight and movement, what do they do? They bend. And then what do you do? You try to bend it back. Bad. Because then it shreds, and now you've got two pieces of metal, raw metal, that are not only a safety hazard, but you've got to DX the bag and get rid of it. We went to a PE uh, foundation on our frame, and that allows us to do a couple other cool things. For example, it gives us a great foundation for the bag. My bags stay upright. You guys already know that. The other thing is it allowed us to bolt everything in. You won't find a rivet on any FPG product. And why? Well, guess what? What does weight and movement do to rivets? It shears those. And what do you do? You go back and you take a number 10 standard bolt and you put it in there. Why? Because that's what you got in the supply room. And then you bolt that thing together. So guess what ours is bolted together with? Number 10 standard bolts, guys. Next thing you'll find is we use an extruded rubber runner on here, not plastic. Now this is hugely important and I'm just going to show you and anybody who's seen my demo before, you've seen this so you know. And here's the reason why. That's over 200 pounds on that bag jumping up and down. And see what's happening? Well, let me bring it up for you. It's coming back up to its original shape. Oh yeah, no breakage. So when your bag's hanging off the back of a five ton or a deuce and a half flopping down the road, your bag's still good to go. You got rid of that expandable handle, why? Well, hey, no offense, that's great if you're in an admin location and you're rolling across concrete or tile or something like that. But when you've got 70 pounds in a bag or more, like you guys typically pack this stuff with, and you're dragging it across that gravel or that uneven terrain, when that bag goes to roll over, and you know it's going to roll over, what happens? Well, injury, injury, injury. Why? You know what? We've got a flex handle. So now when it rolls over, you just drag it a couple more feet until you realize it and say, hey, kick it back over and good to go. And when you're flying TSA, though, we can lock it up. It's all the little extras sometimes that show up. Every FPG bag has contoured, padded, adjustable, removable shoulder straps. Why? They're contoured so they don't slip off your shoulders when you've got body armor on. They're padded for when you don't have body armor on. They're adjustable on both ends because, hey, look, look in your unit. How many different body types do you have? Tall, skinny, short, fat, right? So now it works with that. And they're removable so that when you fly commercial air, you can slick the bag as clean as possible, tuck them away, and you're good to go. So every one of our bags has a uh, uh, gym bag handle for obvious reasons. Okay, a couple ways that you can get into the bag. You've got fast text buckles down here on the shoulder straps and that's just an easy way to do it. Our zippers are for the primary body are always lockable. They use a yin-yang zipper and basically what that means is the sliders come together like that and you can put a TSA or a Brinks lock through them. If you want to use a regular uh, master lock or something like that you can use the outside zipper pulls for that as well. You open it up 
You've got our gee dunk panel up top, and depending on the bag will depend on the interior features. But the things that, that are stock standard on here. Okay. Oh, hey, look, my bag didn't collapse. And why is that? We use a laminated closed cell foam frame all the way around this. Uh, and what that does for you is three really important things. The first thing it does is it leaves your bag open for you to do whatever you want to do in it. Second thing that it does is now when it's sitting out on a tarmac getting rained on for two days, everything inside still dry. Now please don't confuse that with being submersible. In other words, if you throw it out in the bay, you get exactly what you deserve. But if it's getting rained on, everything inside still dry. Last but not least, well, on the weekends, if your cooler breaks down, you can throw some ice in here and use it as a field expedient ice chest. But, hey, that's up to you. A couple other things about it. The bottom pad is removable, so you could use that as a yoga mat or a PT pad. Hey, guys, you remember earlier when I jumped up and down on this thing? You notice that there's no white stress fracture in here like a cheap piece of plastic would be there? Remember those bolts I told you about? Even the wheel housings are bolted in, so if you're out in the field somewhere and this thing breaks, you can field replace it with a, a Leatherman or a Gerber. Uh, Everyone's always asking me, why are your compression straps so long? Well, the idea is pretty simple. It's so that we can put the FOR76 right on top of it. What this does is with a simple click and snatch, on the bottom and a click and snatch on the top, we designed your ultimate loadout system or we what we like to call the ULS. That's three duffel bags worth of gear in two bags all on one rolling chassis. That's your ULS.